Hello. And welcome to the Church of Christ radio program. We would like to thank the Churches of Christ in this area, for making these programs possible, and also you the listener, for tuning in to hear the lessons as they're presented. The speaker at this time is Brother Brian Barrett, who preaches for the church in Spurlockville, West Virginia. If you enjoy Brother Brian's lesson you may now visit our website at www.thechurchesofchrist.life. Brother Barrett has stored radio programs that you may listen to. And we now have a new video lesson taught by him every Thursday evening. You will also find links to other church websites with learning opportunities. Now, here's Brian. God, who at many times and in many ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Such is the reading from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. For those who read and study the Bible, one truth holds steady. God has spoken. And in these last days, He speaks to us by His Son, Jesus Christ, through and by the New Testament. The churches of Christ have sought to use this thought as our guiding principle and encouraging people to return to the Scriptures, especially the New Testament, to use them alone as our guide in matters of religion and faith. We're living in a time when many have been taught and believe that religious division among Christian churches is a good thing. It gives us choices. But where do those choices come from? Why do they exist? What has been their results? Speaking to the last question, such division in doctrine, creed, beliefs, has led those who believe in Christ to not just be divided in thought, beliefs, or worship, but sadly today we see the influence of Christianity fading as there exists at this time no apparent standard by which to follow. No clear right or wrong, if you will. This is by no means the first time God's people have been in such difficult waters. The truths that led them back before will lead us back to unity and success again if we will seek and follow those principles laid out in the Scriptures. I have lived long enough to understand that given time, everything old is new again. Today we want to look at the subject matter of man's way versus God's way. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 verses 6 through 9 in speaking on behalf of the Lord says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And thus we have that contrast between Man's ways and God's ways. Just a little bit later in Isaiah chapter 59, beginning in verse 1 and going through verse 2, the writer says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, And your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. Most certainly God's ways are not our ways when we begin to look at the Scriptures and truly hold up the Scriptures as a standard of life and practice and compare that to the world around us today. 
The differences that we see between man's ways and God's ways generally through the scriptures are defined as sin. As we look at the world around us today, we find that the words of Isaiah are truly powerful to us because, you know, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, and neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But these differences, our iniquities, have separated between us and God. They have created a division, and it has caused Him to hide His face from us and refuse to hear. This is the result of mankind following their ways versus God's ways. Mankind today, with their evolutionistic science and humanistic thinking, have decreed the Bible as well as all religion, myth, and superstition. To speak in theological terms today, many just refer to the Bible from a historical standpoint and try to read the Bible as if they would any other book. James says in James 1.25, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. For many today, it would seem that it's easier to embrace the lack of faith than the reality of an inspired word an inspired book, the Holy Bible, the New Testament, as something given to us by the living God. If we want to be blessed today, and especially blessed by God, we must be people of faith. We must become people of the book, the New Testament specifically, where Jesus and his disciples, those he sent, speak to us today. But never underestimate the fact, as Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Jesus made something clear while on earth And Matthew quotes it in Matthew 24, verse 35. Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. How many times in my lifetime have I seen scientific reason, thought, history, all of those things become changed because of some passing trend or some new revelation. But Jesus tells us that the Word of God is sure. The Word of God is lasting. It comes to us through inspiration of men as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Jesus, speaking to his disciples in Matthew 28, 18, said, All power is given me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. As we think about the things that Jesus spoke of, the things that the New Testament writers wrote of, the things contained in the Scriptures, Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Inspiration. The Holy Spirit guiding and directing both the prophets of old, as well as those who were the followers of Jesus to give us his word, to reveal to us his ways. Paul tells the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, 
Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Man's ways causes division. Man's ways causes confusion. And there were divisions at the church that was there in Corinth. But Paul calls us back in the authority and in the name of Jesus Christ to speak the same thing, that there be no divisions. The only way to accomplish that is to study God's way and to follow God's way. And the only way to find that is to go into the scriptures given by inspiration and follow them. As Paul spoke with the Ephesian elders in Acts, the 20th chapter, he had this to say, beginning in verse 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember by the, that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul encouraged the Ephesian elders to follow after the counsel, the things that he had declared unto them. He also warned them that there would be those who would rise up, who would speak perverse things, that's different things from what had been taught, and a specific purpose being to draw away disciples after them, in so doing, creating and causing division. Therefore, we must be mindful and watchful of those who would teach different things from the Scriptures and would divide the body of Christ with teachings that cannot be found in the Scriptures based upon man's ways and not God's ways. Paul also speaking to the church at Rome in Romans 16 verses 17 and 18, says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. You know, we need to understand that not everything that even preachers and teachers say come from the Scriptures really do. We have to watch those who would change the gospel of Christ for purposes of their own reasons rather than lifting up and upholding the teachings of God. Paul further in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 says, Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even his him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that, sh- that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. 
would ask the question today, do you love the truth of God's Word more than the teachings of men? Because God says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. And such a gap exists between those as if we're talking about the heavens and the earth. Those who love God's truth will study the scriptures to find out what the truth of life, the truth of our daily lives as well as how we worship God in spirit and the truth is revealed in all of those things. But understand that God will allow people to teach false things. He will allow them to even bring strong delusions upon those who would believe a lie, who would not reference and check the Scriptures to see if these things were so. If you don't believe the truth, but you have pleasure in unrighteousness and try to justify those things by man's ways, rather than confronting and repenting of those things by God's Word, the end result shall be disastrous. Paul, speaking to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 4, 17 through 19, says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as the other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Blindness of their heart. And here the scriptures is not referring to the pump that moves blood around in our chest, but he's talking about the mind the very heart, the very seed of our existence, that which gives us conscience, that which guides our life, which governs our sense of morality, right and wrong. If our hearts are blinded to the truth of God, they're also blinded in the way in which we react and respond to the things which are in the world. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know, that's really what happens when we start following man's ways versus God's ways and trying to justify our actions by our own beliefs and own ideas. We exchange the truth of God's Word into nothing more than fables and stories that hold up uh, no substance. The Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews 2 and 1, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. The things he's speaking about taking heed of and what we've heard are the things revealed to us in the scriptures. And I like the wording of this because it says let, that should uh, we let them slip. Things slipping out of our hands generally occur because of carelessness. Either we have not prepared our hands to hold a thing, we have not cleaned our hands of that which would cause something to slip, or else we're careless in just the way in which we hold on to something. But that carelessness causes things to slip. And so we as people of God and people who believe in God must exercise care 
in giving heed to the things which we've heard, to pay attention to the things of the Scriptures. Because being careless hearers and doers can cause the truth of God's Word to slip from our grasp and cause us to do things that are not pleasing unto God. In the next chapter, Hebrews 3, 12 and 13, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Besides a careless approach to the things of God and not paying attention to the things that we should hold on to, as we are bombarded daily with temptations and the deceitfulness of sin, many times we depart from the living God because our heart has become filled with unbelief. We have believed the lie that the world has told us. The Hebrew writer in 3.14 says, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. What the Bible says is what the Bible says, and what we believed in the beginning is what must carry us through our life. We must be faithful unto death in order to gain the crown of righteousness. John says in John 20, 30 and 31, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. The scriptures, not only of the book of John, but the entire New Testament exist to tell us about who Jesus was, about his life, to understand he was God's anointed, the Son of God, and that he wants to give us eternal life through his name. Jesus also warns in Matthew 24, 24, For there shall rise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. There's always this battle between man's ways and God's ways. There are always false messiahs, false leaders rising up, false prophets teaching things that are not based upon the Word of God. The only way for us not to be deceived is to hold on to the things, the confidence that we had from the Scriptures from the very beginning of the church unto this very day. Colossians 1.16, talking about Jesus, says, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He, that is Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Does Jesus take preeminence in your life, in your ways? Does He guide and direct you? Do you allow the Scriptures to lead you? Do you follow God's ways versus your ways or some other man or woman's ways? Jesus is the firstborn, the first begotten from the dead, the first to resurrect from the dead, to ascend into heaven, to sit on the right hand of God, and there as king over the church have preeminence. He is the head of the body, the church. Revelation 22 and 14 said, Blessed are they 
that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.16, Take heed to yourself and unto the doctrine continue in them. For in so doing thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. God's word, God's ways are better than ours. And we ought to consider how much higher and how much nobler and purer God's ways are than our ways. In this day and age, we need to be turning back to God. We need to be following the things of the Scriptures. And the churches of Christ call you back to following those Scriptures as they were given almost 2,000 years ago by those who heard Jesus were His followers and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Why not make this the day that you and your family make a decision to know more about God's plan for your lives and your eternal salvation. I realize due to the present COVID-19 issues, many of the local congregations of the Churches of Christ are not meeting publicly at this time. However, we are still available to speak with you over the phone and to answer any questions that you may have. And we'd also like to invite you to check out many of the Facebook Live meetings and recorded sermons and lessons and services that are taking place until we're able to meet again in our public assemblies. No one understand this, that the churches of Christ, our members, not just the ministers, but all are concerned about your safety and your salvation. And we encourage you to open the door of your heart and of your lives so that you may come to understand understand God's salvation, which is truly worth finding and knowing. May God bless and keep you in His grace as we walk together in His truth. And remember, as always, the churches of Christ salute you. Thank you again for listening to the lessons today. We would encourage you to visit our website for more learning opportunities. There is much to do and see. www.thechurchesofchrist.life May God bless you. Until we have time together again.